We continue to follow breaking news in Arlington where a double shooting prompted lockdowns at three schools. One witness says, quote, it's a war out here and describes the shooting as the wild, wild west. The gunfire was on Alderman Road, and you can see the three nearby schools on lockdown, Terry Parker High, Arlington Middle, and Parkwood Heights Elementary. Those same schools were on lockdown yesterday because of an off-campus fight involving about 20 high school students. We have complete coverage, beginning with Channel 4's Eric Avignier. Eric, a teenager was just taken away by ambulance? That is correct. In fact, we're outside the Arlington Eagle apartment complex, which is less than, I would say, a mile from where the shooting actually took place. We have just learned that one of the victims uh, was found by police here. Uh, we don't know if that victim lives here or why he was here. But again, at this particular location, it is just one of several crime scenes involved in this case. As you can see there, uh, crime scene investigators are still on scene uh, searching for more clues, more evidence. Now, what is very significant about this location, if we can pan the camera in the opposite direction. Keep in mind, this particular apartment complex is located right off of the Arlington Expressway Service Road, which is the same location, I would say about uh, less than 200 feet from this location where I'm standing. Uh, that's where investigators had a bulk of, uh, of, of concentration on a light blue car that they were searching uh, from what we have been told from one of the eyewitnesses. It was that blue car that was used by the shooter and several other individuals that was in that vehicle. Now, at one point when we got out here, we saw them literally going through the car. We also saw officers uh, going through some of the wooded area that is associated that was like right across from where that car was. Not sure if they were looking for more suspects or if they were looking for the gun, but I just find it really interesting how that location is, like I said, less than 200 feet from where we are right here. Now, what's also really interesting about all of this is that I would say within the last 15 minutes, we saw a woman come get that car and drive off. So we're not sure if she's the owner of that car or if she's maybe a parent of one of the suspects that was involved. Who, yeah, Like I said, maybe they used that car. We do not know. There's so many unknowns in this case that we're trying to figure out. We hope to have more information as it becomes available. But the updated information right now, it at least one victim found here at this apartment complex. That's the Arlington Eagle apartment complex right off the Arlington Expressway. Reporting live, Eric Avigny, Channel 4, the local station. And Channel 4's Lindsay Gardner has been talking with people at the Azalea Ridge Apartments, the scene of the shooting. One woman told Lindsay she came face to face with a gunman and begged him to stop. Lindsay, what else did she tell you? Well, Tom and Mary, you said it right off the top of the newscast. She pleaded with me and kept saying, Miss Lindsay, it's a war out here and it's not going to stop until we see a kid that's shot. She says this has been an ongoing battle between Terry Parker High School as well as another school, Lone Star High School, that's just behind me. She recounted for me today the horrific encounter she had with the gunman pleading for him not to kill this teenager he had already shot. I want to let my photographer zoom in on this scene behind me. As you can see, JSO patrols are starting to pull out and leave this scene. Uh, but this all unfolded at the other side of Azalea Ridge. On the other side of this complex, there is a cut through to Lone Star High School. So she tells me she saw the shooter around 830 this morning and the shooter had been on the property all day. And then she says around 145, she started hearing the gunfire. She ran out of her door and she saw the shooter, the same kid she had seen throughout the day, standing over a teen that was on the ground. And then she tells me she says she came face to face with that shooter and she said please stop you're gonna kill him and the boy on the ground was saying you're gonna kill me please don't kill me he had already been shot twice and then she said he took the gun and looked right in her eyes and aimed that gun at her and then went back to the teen on the ground and his friends were in a car egging him on and the teen that had already been shot on the ground was literally moving on the ground trying to avoid taking more gunfire she says after about nine shots were fired the shooter then got in a car sped off. One of those cars would be where Eric Avignier was just reporting from. Then she says she saw the victim who had come from Lone Star High School. Several of his friends that had scattered then came out and grabbed him and pulled him in to a car and drove off, presumably taking him to the hospital. She tells me two were shot out here. The teen on the ground shot in the cheek and the abdomen. Another teen was hit in the leg, but she tells me the teen that was on the ground being shot also had a gun and was also firing shots. He just did not 
not shoot anybody with his bullets. But then she tells me after all this happened, then she says JSO went to this retention pond back here and pulled firearms from the water. She says this is an ongoing battle between Terry Parker and Lone Star, and it's really leaving all of these families out here to feel very helpless. In fact, we spoke with another grandmother whose grandkids live here, and she says they are truly afraid. I fear for our safety and my grandchildren because they're, they're, it's every day you hear bullets here. Every day I hear bullets that I visited her. So it's pretty bad. I just think that something needs to be done. Reiterate, this is a nice area in front of this apartment complex. I'm looking at these beautiful homes here in front of us. It would seem to be a quiet neighborhood if you didn't see our news crews out here and the JSO vehicles as well. Now, while I was on the property speaking with that grandmother, I actually spoke to her grandchildren who recounted for me what these lockdowns have been like, and it was truly so sad as a parent to hear what these children are going through in our schools, going on these code red lockdowns, to hear what they're going through at their elementary school, trying to stay safe from this neighborhood gunfire. I'm going to have that child's account for you coming up all new at 530. Reporting from Arlington, Lindsay Gardner, Channel 4, the local station. Thank you, Lindsay. We continue to gather information on this and we'll bring you updates live with each new development. And as always, we'll be updating our news4jacks.com app. Be sure to download the app and we'll send you updates immediately to your smartphone. Within the past 90 minutes, we spoke with Duval County Superintendent Nikolai Vitti about several recent arrests of students for bringing guns to school. And in less than an hour from now, parents will voice their concerns at First Coast High School and hear what school officials are doing to try to keep students safe. Channel 4's Elizabeth Campbell just met with Dr. Vitti. She's joining us live with what he wants families to know. Elizabeth? Well, Tom and Mary, Dr. Vitti says, unfortunately, it is a reality these days that weapons are in schools. But he says in his district, one gun is too many. He says one thing parents can do a better job of is being aware of access their child has to guns, whether at home or in their neighborhoods, and to make sure they know who their student is hanging out with. Now, I want to tell you the most recent incidents that we know were yesterday. Three students arrested for bringing a gun to to school. Those students were from Chafee Trail Elementary School, Ed White High School, and First Coast High School, which is where I am now. Now, First Coast has more issues than any other school this year, with five total arrests being made for incidents involving weapons on school property. So far in the 2016-2017 school year, there have been nine incidents involving guns being brought to school. Those nine incidents resulted in nine arrests. Seven of those incidents involved students, one involved a teacher, and one involved a parent. Dr. Vitti also wants parents to know that transparency is a number one priority for him. He says that he always is making sure that principals know if a weapon is found on their campus, that it is priority that they immediately notify parents. I think that's important to build trust. Um, and an openness and a, and a level of transparency. There's always um, a possible thought process of, well, no one was hurt, people don't need to know about it, it was harmless, the student accidentally put a knife in their bag. Every situation, I've been very clear and firm that we are going to tell parents. Dr. Vitti says if there's anything that brings him a little bit of peace out of all of this, it's that there is no evidence that shows that any of those students plan to use any of those weapons against any students or employees at the school. But he says, of course, they are aware that accidents happen. That's why they are so serious about making sure these numbers go down. Now, coming up at 6 o'clock, I will tell you what Dr. Vitti says about socioeconomic status and the role he believes that plays in these incidents. Reporting live from the north side, Elizabeth Campbell, Channel 4, the local station. Elizabeth, what does Dr. Vitti say, though, about the consequences? Will the schools be doing anything to send a strong message to students? Absolutely, Mary. He says they're already taking measures, but after a recent incident, he says they are going to be stepping up 
letting students know the consequences over PA announcements, also in their assemblies. And one thing that really stood out to me is he says uh, that they're going to bring in students to those assemblies who've been arrested in the past for bringing weapons to school so they can tell their personal story student to student about the consequences, about being arrested and about going through the criminal justice process. And hopefully that will be a little more enlightening for students that are listening. Hopefully that does make a difference. Elizabeth Campbell reporting to us live. Thank you.